Welcome to section 6, Grunt Init and the Plugin Template. In this section we're going to build our very own Grunt plugin. We'll cover all of the steps required including publishing the completed module to NPM at the end of the section. Wrapping up custom functionality in a plugin is useful because it means we can reuse code in multiple projects and share the plugin with other developers. In this video we'll make a start by creating the shell for our plugin, installing the Grunt init module and installing the Grunt plugin template. The plugin that we're going to create will wrap up the custom task that we created in the last section which got the name of the current git branch and injected it into the config for another task. So first of all we need to install the Grunt init npm module. We can install this globally, it doesn't have to be installed in another project. Next we need to install the Grunt plugin template. We can clone it from GitHub and it should be saved to either our home or user folder depending on the operating system that we're using. We don't want to create the plugin inside the example project that we've been working in so far in the course, although we can use the plugin in our project once we're done. So let's create another new folder somewhere convenient. I'll put mine in my user folder again, and I'm just going to cd backup into the user folder from the grunt project folder that the command line is currently in. So we can now run the grunt init npm module we installed and use the plugin template to create a default plugin that we can extend. So this will take us into a series of prompts. Some of these prompts we're going to be able to use the default values for. So the first one, project name, we can just use the default value for that, that's fine. For the description, let's write a brief description. That description should be fine. We can go with the default version. The plugin has guessed my GitHub URL incorrectly, so I'm just going to correct it to use the right version. The project homepage URL is fine. The issues tracker is also fine. License, I'm happy to go with MIT. And I'm just going to update the author name. The author email is fine. And I'll just leave the author URL blank. So the grunt version that it's detected is fine and also the node version. So it's asking if we want to make any changes and actually we do want to make a change. And I've just noticed in the description, I haven't escaped the apostrophe. So I'm gonna say yes here. So the defaults that it's gonna use now are the answers that I asked last time. So the project name is fine. It's the description that I'd like to update. and I'll make sure that I escape the apostrophe this time. And now the rest of the answers are gonna be fine, so I can just hit enter repeatedly until I get to the end again. And this time I'm gonna say, I don't need to make any changes. And now the process is complete. So we now see that there's a message that says that it's initialized from the template grunt plugin and that we should now install the project dependencies with npm install. So let's do that next. So let's take a quick look at what has been installed. We can see that we have a node underscore modules folder that will contain all of the node modules that we're gonna use in this project. We also have a tasks directory and that is where the task for our plugin will reside. And we have a test directory which will contain the unit tests for our task. We've also got some other files like a git ignore file, there's a JS hint file, we have our grunt file, a license MIT file, the package.json file which describes our project, and a readme file. So these are all the kinds of files that we're gonna need when we're developing grunt plugins, and the template has added them all for us. If we want, we can run the example tests. Let's try doing that. We do that from the command line with the grunt test command. And we see at the end, there were two assertions and that they passed. So in this video, we saw how to install the Grunt init module and the Grunt plugin template. We then saw how to initialize our Grunt plugin project using these tools. We also learned exactly what gets installed and created for us and saw that we can run the tests to make sure that everything was set up correctly. In the next video, we're going to actually start developing our Grunt plugin by integrating the code from our custom task into the new plugin.